Hello everyone, Chick here with another Transformers review, and today I'll be reviewing Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron Trilogy Autobot Arc. And yes, he has been what I've been using for the backdrop for all these videos for the past uh, however long. And as you can see, he is massive, barely fits in the whole frame at the back of the table. And on the side, the, te the obligatory box art that almost uh, every single well figure has and here we have the back of said arc our box and you can see he has a loading ramp uh, lots of gaps which is very unfortunate teletran one teletran one satellite golden discs or disc and a tiny little optimus prime and he transforms in 26 steps. Doesn't look like it's too complex. Transform, uh, mainframe transforms in 20 steps into, I guess, Teletran 1. And then 17 steps into, I guess, the part of the arc that he makes up. And let's see if there's anything else. Yep, there's arc crashed. On this side, he is Titan class, obviously. And let's see, nothing on the bottom except for warnings and barcodes, or barcode. And that's about it for all our packaging. And let's go ahead and get this behemoth out of his box. All right, so here we have the Autobot arc out of his packaging, or its packaging, uh, Teletran 1 out of his packaging, calls it the Autobot arc. And let's just pan the camera up to get a nice, good look at what we've got here. The Autobot arc. And it keeps going and going and going and gone. So there we got the whole Autobot arc. And you may have noticed there are some things that don't come standard with the figure. I mean, obviously the blast effect parts come standard with the figure, but the stand, and then also these pieces right here. Go ahead and if you pop this off, you'll see what it looks like. And I guess I'll show you when I go ahead and transform. And there's also a couple other, or a couple other things I'll have to show you later. Or not, let's see, later, later, but let's go ahead and get the Autobot arc off the stand so we can get a better look at it. All right, so this right here is a third party thing that they made to act as a better stand rather than just having the arc sitting on all four thrusters. I guess it's so you can get a better look at the whole arc as a whole rather than just having it sitting right on them. I don't know, it, it's, if I'd known that it could stand very well without the stand, I might not have gotten it to begin with, but it's still pretty cool to have. Um, the colors don't quite match up, but since it's a transport vehicle slash stand, I don't think it matters as much as, of course, these gap fillers. The, it's a really good thing that those are the right color. They're 3D printed, and it's the right color. The only problem is these um, turrets tend to pop off, but I'm planning on gluing them once I figure it out where I want them glued exactly. So anyway, to get this thing converted, you just flip the the legs in and then you just close it up and I guess you can rotate this around and then you have a little transport vehicle with rubber tires that rolls around pretty well and you could also have the arc on here and then just have it rolling around with the arc of course you'd want to be careful because you don't want it to fall over but it's something you could do sort of like maybe one of those rocket transporter things that they would use in NASA to move their rockets around and before we uh, get to all the other things, um, oops, let, see, there goes one of them. Like I said, need to glue them at some point. But look at the detail on the thrusters, the engines. Uh, they're a dark gray plastic with bl uh, light blue painted on to give the illusion of, like, I guess, flames or thruster or engines being on. Maybe not say full power, but just running. And then here is the button for the uh, ramp, and let's go ahead and put on the, put down the uh, landing struts. 
which um, don't necessarily, at least the one on the front has a tendency to collapse down. And for this, we're going to need to uh, lower the camera quite a bit. Uh, lower the camera just a bit to be able to get down here to see the uh, ramp. And I don't know why. It's like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's supposed to spring drop. And it's always dropping when I don't want it to drop. There we go. See? Spring loaded. And if you uh, look closely, you can see the hydraulic system for it. Obviously, it's, the springs are not in the hydraulics, but the hydraulics um, are just there to make it look cooler and more realistic. The springs are, as you can see, back there. And you can see what looks like two big bulkhead doors that are partly open inside. And like I said, that front landing strut does not like to stay down. Now let's see if we can actually get this operate normally. So you click into place and drop it. Click it, drop it. I don't know why it gets stuck sometimes, but that's about it for that. And let's go ahead and get the stand back. So here we are back on the stand. And let's go ahead and uh, see about getting this um, front landing strut back up. There we are. Now we have it all nice and level, being hard to look at for as far as this is concerned. Um, but here we are, one of the other things that kind of came with the upgrade kit is a gap filler for the back of this tower. Uh, it took me a little while to figure out what that was. I had to look at reference pictures on the listing for the upgrade kit that I bought. Because it didn't come with any instructions, I just had to figure it out myself. And then uh, just shoved it in there and it doesn't seem to want to fall out. So hopefully it'll never pop out. If it does, I guess I could glue it. But that's about it for the, um, the upgrades as far as what we can see in his vehicle mode. And like I said, there's Blast Effects parts, which can plug into his engines like so. And like so, um, of course, it would have made more sense if they had included four of these rather than just two. But I guess you can distribute them, the, the components that make it up between the four engines. I think this might look the best because at the very least, it does protrude from all four. Because if you take like these off, then that doesn't protrude very far. And then, of course, these, maybe the, like you could pretend that these are applying more thrust than these two. I don't know. That's one way you can work around it. Or if you have Siege uh, Jetfire, he has the orange ones, which might look better, I, in my opinion. I think that would look better than the blue. But then again, on the box, you can see the blue glow. But I think the red and blue might actually look kind of cool together. Or you can mix and match them up a bit, too. Like blue and red, blue and orange flames. That might actually look kind of cool. And you'd have all four of these filled up. But that's not something I can do at the moment, but it's something that you could try if you have all those available. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get him ready for transformation. Alrighty, so the first thing you want to do, if applicable, is to remove the gap fillers on both sides, like that. And now you can see kind of uh, how... Uh, awkward the arc looks without them especially from the front and sides it's a pretty obvious gap um, looks a little more angular rather than round uh, nice rounding curves on the sides so uh, now the first real step to really do is to um, get this whole upper assembly cover thing to flip up you kind of just want to lift this whole thing up and then on this side you, you want to lift up on these, get them on tab, but they have a tendency to want to pop off anyway. You just, there we are. Untab it, it might be a little hard to see. Okay, lift up. Uh, untab, come on. Like I said, yeah, there we are. But it, it's probably gonna pop, it might pop off, but you get them up like that. Uh, turn back around. And then also want to bring that back, reveals his head, 
and just kind of collapse that down. And then it clips into place, but doesn't really clip that well. But it clips well enough. And then you just lift this whole thing up, and this time it didn't pop the... Oh boy. Those didn't pop off. Oh, okay. But you just collapse them in, flip in like that. They clip into place. And this right here, you want to flip up those panels and in like that. And I, you might be able to transform them without removing Teletram 1, but I haven't done it yet. Or mainframe. It, they call it mainframe, but I feel like it's pretty much if he turns into the computer console, then that's Teletran 1. But you remove mainframe. And one thing we didn't get a whole lot of it look at through the windows um, is the bridge of the ship. Here you can see the computer, uh, not Vector Sigma, obviously Vector Sigma is on Cybertron, but it does look like it's kind of meant to be Vector Sigma, but I think it's supposed to be like just a holographic projection globe. Then there's all the different consoles. That would be where Optimus would be. And then there's more displays right here, but I think that's more for the uh, Teletran mode, tel uh, Teletran 1 console mode. But I'll show that off later after we get the arc transformed. Anyway, um, before we, uh, boy, camera, very tricky having to move it around uh, quite frequently. But anyway, flip it all the way up. Then you wanna bring this up and out, and it's gonna thunk into place. Should hope, well, and also, I guess we'll take that up, and these ratchets are quite loud. Oh dear, come on. <sighs> Anyway, this right here is supposed to clip into there. Although sometimes it is a little tricky and doesn't want to go in there. And I don't want to break it, obviously. Oh, boy. Maybe this other side will be more cooperative. But same thing. Rotate. Click. 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 Very, very loud. Unfortunately. Come on. Click. Thunk into place why aren't you cooperating oh boy really big fella okay and also when you do it you need to make sure that's completely all the way up because that might be why it was fighting me there we are okay got that thunked into place now just for the other side come on you were never fighting me this much last night come on see folks this is what happens now there we are Denver wants to cooperate on camera, but it works perfectly beforehand and then decides it wants to fight you uh, other, otherwise, uh, or all the other times. So let's get this turned down. You uh, just want to get this clipped into place. This right here tabs into there on either side. And uh, everything should just snap and clip into place. And here we have print most of his upper body done. And of course, like I said, his the back part doesn't really like to stay clicked into place. But, oh well. It doesn't matter too much because it still kind of hangs out of the way. And as you can see, already starting to get too big for the camera. Now one thing we can go ahead and do, probably should have done this first, but it doesn't really matter because I wasn't doing the lower body yet, but just flip that cover open. Flip the, uh, well, it looks like another bridge. It might be a secondary bridge. I really don't know, but flip that in. Observation tower? Crow's nest? I don't know, something. I don't know what the Earth equivalent would be, but then you just kind of split. And like I said, these always pop out when you don't want them to, but when you try to get them to pop out, they don't want to. But you just, really heavy, loud ratchets. Rotate at the hips, thighs, yeah. Rotate down, and while we're down here, just go ahead and flip out his foot, clip that, close that back up, and then second one, just like the first, flip out his foot, and then just okay, let's turn, take this up a few notches again, rotate at the waist, full three or one eighty. 360 but a 180 and now we can't even really see the top of his head right now 
that just goes to show how big this is and how short my camera stand is at the moment. Um, and it doesn't get any higher, at least not this one. So I'm going to have to, a little bit, um, to show off all of them, I'll need to go freestyle. But you just extend his arm, ratchet down, rotate around, and then, then you flip his hand out. And as you can tell, just so many ratchets on this guy. I mean, it's a good thing because if they weren't, they're just friction joints. He'd probably be all floppy. But rotate his hand around, and then other side, just the same thing. Yeah. Ratchet down, rotate, flip the hand out, and whoop, I guess the hand wrist joint's stronger than his bicep swivel. And then there we are. Got him. pretty much now we got him in his robot mode, which is impressively tall. Of course, he is um, not as big as some of the other Titans, but you can see his uh, big old head. His big old shoulders, big old chest, tiny waist, relatively small uh, upper legs, and big chunky uh, lower legs. And then his kind of lanky looking uh, hands. Uh, he does look pretty cool. Uh, face is modeled after the last Autobot. Doesn't really seem as appropriate for the arc, but I guess it's kind of cool regardless. Um, now the feature I wanted to show you is that um that the uh upgrade kit had is a light up thing and it's magnet activated not sure exactly how that works but you uh, tap a magnet to it turns them on tap it again slow blink tap again rapid blink and then tap again to turn off and that's pretty cool uh it is on a mushroom peg it can do a full 360 but you can't look up or down or side to side, nothing like that. That's a little bit of a bummer, but I mean, to be fair, Fortress Max was can't really do that. But then again, he's a headmaster. I don't know about Metroplex, never had Metroplex. So I don't know if that's standard or not for these big guys. Now, of course, that's just the top of the front of the ship. Uh, and revealed Autobot emblem. Uh, his hands, uh, they are not individually articulated. Might end up picking up that upgrade kit at some point, but I mean, it's not too bad, I guess. But the hands, they're just pretty much two hinges one for the thumb, which is on a soft ratchet from the looks of it, and then the all four other fingers, which are on one uh, hinge together. And then, oh boy, articulation this is going to be interesting. Okay, for articulation, the um, the shoulder. Can do a full 360, quite loud. And I'm not going to do both sides, I'm just going to do one side because they're both pretty much identical. Up that far. Over 90 degree bend at the elbow. Right wrist is on a swivel, and I showed off the hands. And we also saw in, in, um, in a transformation the waist is on a swivel. Let's get that hand out. Uh, legs. You can go out that far, so you can do just over the regular spits. Uh, can we see that? Can we see that? Okay, yes, we can see that. Okay, so that's about far, and then you kick forward that far. Okay. Oop. You can kick forward that far, back that far, so pretty far, even with all the uh, thick chunkiness in his legs. And then knees, over 90 degree bend at the knees, but that's also helped out with transformation. Oh boy. And he also has ankle tiltage. About that much on this side, about the same on that side. Not a whole lot, but it's there. And I feel like I just got a little bit of a workout in a, a very, a very small, minor one, but still, 
they'll work out nonetheless. You definitely know you got a big figure when transforming them is almost like a workout. One last thing before we move on to um, mainframe, aka Teletran 1. You can store these on the back of his, whoops, and there goes another turret again. Like I said, I need to glue them, but like I said, I'm not sure exactly how I want to glue them, but just slide them in like so. Um, don't know if it really matters which leg goes on which, but they don't look too bad on the back and they fit in relatively well. So, I mean, it just makes them a little, there, there we are, a little chonkier, but it doesn't look bad. And also it fills in the little gap in the back in robot mode. So it doesn't look horrible at all. It doesn't look really bad. It doesn't look bad is what I'm trying to say. Can't seem to get that out. Now let's go ahead and send them off to the back. And we'll move on to uh, a much smaller and hopefully easier bot to look at. Like I said, like I pointed out, there's all this detail for the bridge. And we're going to go ahead and mess up, uh, oh well, move everything around. So I'm going to untab the legs. Rotate them down. And then you're just going to, and for taking them into his uh, console mode, you want to then ex we'll tab those into the pretty much the top of his knees. Rotate that out. Rotate his feet in. Pull out. Rotate. And then flip up. Tab. There we are. Come on. Yeah, there we are. Got nice and tabbed in. Flip this panel up. Then want to get these up and out of the way. Right. Rotate this out. Keep the shoulder lined up. That tabs in right there. Rotate. Come on. Rotate it around. Get that tabbed into place. And then flip this out, and there goes one of the golden discs. That tabs in right there. This tabs in like this. And then this one flips out and tabs in in there. And then this tabs above here like that. And here we have uh, Teletran 1 as a computer, uh, the main computer console for the Autobot Arc. Of course, right here it's just pretty much all panels have been unfolded. Here are the uh, golden discs. There's two of them. This is the more, I think, accurate Beast Wars cartoon. Maybe this is the one from, it's supposed to look like the one from the actual Voyager. Not sure, but this is one I do remember from the show. And then, of course, on the back it says The Sounds of Earth. I don't know if that's on the actual Voyager record. And then on this other one, it's uh, more stylized. Um, well, it looks like alien symbols. Not sure what this is from. This might be from the Japanese version. I really don't know. But same on the back, the sounds of Earth. That's pretty much it for the golden discs. Finally glad to get a hold of those because that's excellent accessories for Beast Wars or Kingdom, Megatron, Dinobot, and all of them. Especially Megatron and, I guess, Dinobot. Yeah, but that's pretty much it for the... Uh, Oh, wait, one more thing. Um, although it doesn't raise up from out here where it gets launched, but here we have the uh, little satellite thing, little probe or drone that flies out of the Ark in the first episode where it scans a bunch of Earth vehicles that then uh, gets the ship to repair uh, Autobots and Decepticons alike and make them functional again. And also, when you transform him into robot mode, you don't really have to remove this stuff. You can leave this in here. There's actually slats on the back of his, part of him where you can uh, just um, leave the drone in there or satellite, whatever you want to call it. But to get him into his robot mode, you just want to pretty much untab everything, close up the panels. Come on, untab. Flip in. Then you can go ahead and put the golden discs back in. 
just for storage and safekeeping. And then clip that in. You don't have to worry about this popping off, but it does come off. As you can see, you can see the pattern on it where it looks almost like they're trying to make it look like Vector Sigma. But anyway, you plug that back in. If you took it out, that is. Claps this panel, claps this panel, and then just wiggle it back in. And then, of course, you want to rotate his feet. This time, instead of rotating them this way, you want them to rotate this way. And as you can see, based on where it's positioned, they are more centered on his leg. And just claps in, claps in. And it should click into place, or yeah, like that. Click into place. Then you undo that. And you rotate the hips around like that. Now it looks like that could almost be the head too, which I think would also be kind of cool if that was the head too. Potentially, anyway. You rotate this down. Pretty much just get his, and you want to rotate this panel out so you can reveal his hand. Clip that out, close it back up. There we are, got one arm done. Second arm, just like the first. Flip that out, rotate around. And then we want to uh, bring this down, flip up his head. And here you'll see the, um, the two little slots I was talking about where you uh, just line these solar panels to line up with and then just claps it in even though it lines up like that, it just, I guess that's just so it can slide down and in. And here we have mainframe in his robot mode, or I, or as I'd like to say, just Teletram 1 in his robot mode. Although one could say that um, the arc up there is Teletram 1. It's a weird thing. I guess it's sort of like, you could think of it as like um, Fortress or Cerebros versus Fortress Maximus. Who's the real brains behind the operation, I guess. Okay, so for articulation, the head is on a uh, ball joint, but it doesn't ha really have any wiggly-waggly, really. Just, it doesn't really do it, just mainly for spinning. Um, and then, let's see. Then his noggin is done in yellow plastic with orange plastic for the visor, which does have some nice light piping, but you can kind of see what's behind him with it, just a little bit. And then um, gray for his faceplate with a little yellow uh, chin, dark gray paint on his forehead, and then dark gray right here, and then just more panels. It just looks like a, maybe like a fan or something, or a speaker, just part of like the computer console, Autobot emblem, of more computery looking stuff more computer components and stuff where he just, he's pretty much just like a walking computer. It's what he is. Well, I mean, I guess one could argue that's what all Transformers are, but he's an actual computer console. So it makes sense. They look more like a computer, computer than most. Uh, the arms could do a full 360 if it wasn't for his backpack kibble. Biceps do a full 360. Arms go up that far. Biceps, just a little less than 90 degrees. The wrists are not on a swivel, but they do hinge, but that's for transformation. He does, as we saw earlier, have hip swivel, but with the backpack and all that collapsed down, he gets very little of that. Legs can go forward that far. Back, almost nothing. Knees, about 90 degrees bend there. And ankle tiltage, he has all the ankle tiltage. And his feet don't move up and down, so that's pretty much it for articulation. And then, of course, the rest of the detail, there's some more computer-looking stuff, like maybe some vents, internal components. And then, of course, back here we have the bridge, and then we have more of Teletram 1 up there. Um, there were some people saying that they, they would rather just have the arc without mainframe, but I almost agree with someone else that said mainframe's the cooler robot out of the two, which I kind of agree with, because... As awesome as the arc is as a transformer, I feel like they could have done a little, made a little more, a little better design choices. Like animated Omega Supreme, he was the pretty much the Abba arc, at least the same style of ship it looked like, even though it was not the arc, but it was kind of like that. If they could have made him more like that, I think that would have been pretty cool. So that's about it for Autobot arc and main frame yeah and i'm a little irked that he doesn't have any uh weapons but 
he is a computer and then he has this big old body with turrets and all that so well like i said i, I like to think of mainframe as teltram one the arc as teltram one and let's just say the arc is his larger body for fighting like titans and all that and then mainframe is his body for interacting with transformers on a regular day-to-day -day basis uh anyway so that's about it for my review of Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron Trilogy, The Autobot Arc, and Mainframe. And if you like this review and you'd like to see more, please click that like and subscribe button to see more. And until next time, have a good one, everyone. One last little tiny itty-bitty addition that I forgot to uh, include in the review initially is the little slug of Optimus Prime. And by little, I mean tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny. Um... When held up against him, absolutely tiny. Um, uh, some might say, well, it's not exactly the scale, but if you compare him to the uh, Autobot Arcs bridge, it looks like he's actually about the right size to uh, man his uh, spot up here in the command center, I guess. As you can see, He's actually about the same size as this uh, hatch, or this uh, turbo lift, whatever you want to call it, in the background. So uh, this is actually pretty much to scale for any of you uh, doubters out there.